What are your thoughts on Washington, who you picked to win the conference, versus Oregon this Friday? We know how that first game went. Washington won 36-33, missed field goal at the end there by Oregon. What do you think of this game in the rematch? I'll get my shots in now while you're not paying as much attention. I'm um, listening to every word you say. I know, I'm just giving you shit. I think it is really interesting. I think that it's really fun that you and I, before the season, predicted opposite teams here, and we've reached the Pac-12 championship game. Neither one of us believed in the bullshit with USC or Colorado. We stayed true with Washington and Oregon in the preseason, and we remain on both sides of this battle determining who is going to win this football game. Look, Blake, I can't not ride with my guys. I have been with the Huskies the entire season. I understand that they are lopsided. I understand a lot of their success is contingent on what their offense does. Right. Logic would dictate, and when I was doing my notes for this, that Oregon wins this football game. They are a surging team. They have been very good over the past few weeks. But for me, plain and simple, Washington is a gamer team. They are a team that steps up to the plate when they have their most important matchups of the season and they play their best football. They are very streaky, but they have talent on their offensive and defensive line to perform better than the stats indicate. There are going to be a lot of guys on that O-line, D-line that are going to go on and get drafted higher than many people expect. And I think that they show up in this game. We already saw the victory that they got earlier on in the season. They have it mapped out. They know how to beat Oregon again. They don't need to change the game plan. They have it all figured out, Blake. So what's stopping them here, playing on a neutral site, playing for the Pac-12 championship? Here's how I think this game is going to go. Now, I went back and watched the game again, and I forgot, okay, how both receivers are really multiple receivers, a couple for uh, Oregon and a couple for Washington went off. Roma Dunze had a massive first half and had a really good second half, but not as big as Troy Franklin did in that second half. Uh, Odunze went eight for 128, two touchdowns. Franklin, Franklin also had eight catches, 154, and a touchdown. But, Joe, I, I got to admit something. This game, for whatever reason, and this is why we do our power rankings, okay? And this is why when everybody gets so mad at me throughout the year when I say, I think Alabama or I think this team would beat so-and-so, Joe, the spread is nine and a half right now for Oregon. Which if is Oregon, ridiculous. I'm sorry, but that that is insanely I don't, I don't think that that's completely ridiculous. Let me tell you why. Because Vegas is the most non-biased entity that you have in, in sports because they are about making one thing. That is money. The biggest takeaway that I had, and I know that we talked about this in the time, was how just how many mistakes Oregon got away with and were still even remotely close in that game. You had the multi right before half going forward on fourth down, trying to get the touchdown, not kicking the field goal. You have it multiple times in there. But let me tell you this. Oregon felt like they had the momentum in that game, okay, pretty much the entire way. Oregon answers, okay, off of the turnover that they got, but Bo Nix had a very bad sack uh, early in this or late in the second half. Penix throws an INT. Oregon goes down and opts to go for it and doesn't get it. But they come back. Troy Franklin gets involved. They get the TD. They go for two. Oregon gets a stop. So not only are they leading, they get a three and out on Washington. But they couldn't ever put him away. And I think the best team that Bo Nix faced all year long when he had a chance to put this team away, he couldn't. And if you do not, if you get up on Washington, if you do not put them away like you did in Seattle oh so many weeks ago, Oregon's going to get beat. Because Washington is not a team that you can just let hang around and do what they want. Here's another thing, too. I know that Washington's pass defense – is arguably one of the worst in Power 5. Joe, they're 122nd in the country. Oregon's secondary isn't that good either. And I I, I it's agree. Very, it's you. very overrated statistically. It's very, I well, I wasn't going to say it's overrated, but they're 48th in the country. They're giving up 214 yards in the year per game. I'm not going to say they're completely overrated. And I know Oregon fans are going to get mad at me. Chill out. I'm picking you to win the game. I think that the biggest thing – 
everybody wants to talk about the receivers on both sides. Bucky Irving in this running game is what's going to win Oregon the football game. Bucky went absolutely stupid in the first matchup. You got to give him more than 22 carries. Get him to 28 to to 30 carries and run the football. They can't. He's built to do that though. He's 5'9, like 200 pounds. He's not. I don't. You don't. He's not. Say- He's not like Dylan Johnson. Dylan Johnson can withstand that that workload. I, I'm not. I don't think is, that he ran the ball 22 that. times for 127 yards in the first time, and every time that Oregon got stifled in the passing game, Bo Nix incompletions, bad decision making. Bucky Irvin was the one running in between the tackles, breaking those tackles, and getting scores. Like they had, did not have an answer for Bucky Irvin. The problem that I have with this is. Why not give him more? Well, Joe, you know what? Don't give him 28 carries. Throw him to him out in the flat. You like to do that all the time. You're going to run screens. You're going to run things in the flat. Do it to him more because they did not have an answer. The running game in this one is going to dictate it. Now, Washington better be careful because Troy Franklin and the boys are explosive as hell. They're explosive. Don't play around with them. I think Oregon's going to win this one by Tutty. I think they're going to win it by a touchdown, mainly due to the fact now that you had another time to face them, they get their running game going. But I'm going to kick it to you with this. Mm. It it is the old adage in football. It is very tough to beat a good team twice. I freaking hate that. I knew that you were going to throw that in my face because I say that all the time on this show. And I said this. I said this after Washington got the first win, that it is going to be very hard to beat them a second time. So I, I applaud you for using that at me. But you brought up something why I, I really, truly, truly sticks to what I think here with, with Washington, saying that they are a team that steps up to the occasion. They are a team. And I know that statistically they haven't put up crazy numbers over the past couple of games because they, they play down to their competition. Plain and simple, they do. But offensively, what makes them so explosive and dangerous, and I've said this all year long, if they need to march down the field and score, unlike any other team in the country except maybe LSU, they can pick up huge chunk plays with limited time and put points on the board. Washington has faced a number of games in which they saw significant adversity. A number of games where their back was against the wall and they found ways to win. They found different avenues to attack in order for them to get the victory. Oregon's only faced adversity once, really. And that was against Washington. Yeah, And what happened? Poor poor in-game coaching decisions hurt them. Just because you faced adversity against bad teams does not mean that you faced adversity. I at least know how they're going to respond that if they go down a touchdown. Home. Respond against whom? You they, know, because they did it against they did it against Oregon the first time they played them. They responded true. to the okay. adversity I, of being in a position to lose the game, and they said, you know what? Michael Penix, Roma Dunze, we're going to go down the field. We're going to put a touchdown on the board. They've done it against Utah. They've done it against Oregon State. I understand – that these aren't the sexiest opponents. These aren't SEC caliber teams. They're still quality football teams. And even when they're playing Stanford their worst not a football, quality football team, I was talking about Oregon State. And Washington Utah. State is not a quality football team. It needs to be acknowledged and it is worth paying attention to that when they're playing their worst football, they have still rallied and found ways to win. I have seen it. So many times, even just this season, where good football teams have completely faltered in the face of adversity. I I look at Oklahoma, we were talking about a second ago, really good example of that. They did step up to to fight against uh, and and fight back against Oklahoma State or Arizona State. I'm not talking about about the level of competition, but what I'm... Joe, you have to bring in a level of competition. Who is Washington's best non-conference win? Did they go to the state of Texas and have to rally like Oregon did? Because I can make that same exact Texas argument. Heck, is not a like some sexy win that they pulled out. And neither is some, and neither is beating Arizona State sixteen to seven either. They had the flu. That game, I don't think, is fair to bring up. I heard up. they had the flu against Stanford. I heard they had the flu against Arizona State. Joe, I know of a team that played in a championship game last year and twenty players had COVID. They not COVID, COVID like symptoms. Let me rephrase what I just said so we don't get banned. 
Okay, we're not gonna. Uh, actually, that's a good point with YouTube. You never know. Uh, Arizona State and Stanford were played back to back. I think that that it is not unreasonable with the rumor that they had uh, had the flu and they played poor football. It's at least worth paying attention to. We know the Florida State dealt with a similar thing when they played Boston College. Just because they have a couple bad football games under their belt does not mean that that is reflective of the team. But that Boston they are. College, I think it's more six win team. You're talking about Stanford. You're talking about a. Come on, Joe. Arizona State might be the worst team in college in P five. You know that, and I know that they're they're not the worst team in P five. Who is? Indiana's worse than Arizona State, and they still got more wins in the Big Ten. Look, I think that it is worth <laughs> more of an applaud. That was a funny point. It's worth more attention that Washington has been challenged and succeeded. And Oregon has not been challenged. Their biggest challenge was Texas Tech. A non-conference team. Did Oregon play the same teams that Washington did? Yes or no? Did they yes, both they did. Utah, correct? You said that you you told me that Utah was a really good opponent, a very fair opponent. And Oregon blew that ass out. Pause, but they blew that ass out. Remember, you told me on the road in Utah, it's a tough place to play. And I said, I don't care. They can't score. And all they do is go to Utah and blow their ass out. Don't I'm tell not gonna, me. Look, or, do not tell me that Oregon is not tested. When they're playing I'm, not saying the that, wait, wait, wait. I'm not saying that they're not tested. I'm obviously acknowledging the big victories that they have. I don't know how much stock I'm going to put in Oregon State finding out that their coach is leaving before kickoff and then going out there to play a football game. I don't know how much stock I'm going to sit here and put into that victory. But, yes, they have a number of dominant wins against USC, against Utah, Jeff, that I will provide acknowledgement for. He knew weeks ago. He said he knew damn near a month ago. Tell, That's not fair. He didn't, tell the, he didn't tell the players that. You're telling me that those kids sitting in that locker room didn't get notifications on their phone from their buddies texting them like, damn, your coach is leaving right before they went out there? That they, wouldn't help they them. Were, they were playing it in the goddamn on the video board. That's a distraction. I can't. I'm not giving him credit for that Oregon State game. Yeah, you know what? Third and seven. When DJU misses a wide open receiver, you know what he was thinking? Oh, well, at least my coach is staying. I. You could tell that that team was visibly distracted. That Oregon State team. They did or not have the same Washington. level of intensity that they usually have, nor Wa the same level of intensity that they brought against Washington. Washington has one glaring weakness, massive weakness. They are abysmal defensively. And Washington fans disagree. hate me when I say that. You are not a complete team. And, Joe, when you play with fire like that, I told you this exact same thing when we launched a show, which, by the way, we're almost coming up on a year. Con happy anniversary, Congratulations. Bro. Okay, the problem is, is eventually this catches up to you. And I think it's catching up to them this week because I don't think that they have the dudes on the outside in the boundary defensively that they, they can keep up with Oregon. Now, I also don't think that Oregon has the dudes on the boundary that can keep up with Roma Dunze. So I we already know that they don't because they didn't do it the first time. We already know that they don't. But I promise you this. I know that Oregon wants to get the receivers more involved. I don't disagree with that logic or that thought. You ran the ball down their throat, and we saw literally in the big game, when you want to run the clock out, you have to be able to have the ability, if you're up six, you're up seven, play a, against an offense like this when you did not do it last time. Joe, think about this, okay? Bernard for Washington had a, a return that got to the 40. Washington got stopped by Oregon. Okay? So you're already up if you're Oregon in the game that they played the, the last time. Oregon goes for it on fourth down. They're trying to continue to go down and score. Instead of kicking a field goal, a 30-something yard field goal, they go for it on fourth down, and they get stopped. Washington comes right back. Penix goes to Roma Dunze twice, hits him in the back of the end zone, score. They might not have those mistakes again. If you limit one of those mistakes, two of those mistakes, this is a 10-point football game, and that is exactly what Vegas is telling you. 
I really don't like that nine point number. I mean, if I'm a betting man, I'm putting. Money I, on I would Washington. take. I'd take the ten points. It's going to get to ten, ten and a half. I'd take Washington ten and a half. Yeah, I would too. I will concede this. The only lack of confidence that I have in Washington is exactly what I have said in comparing Washington to another team. I compared them to what TCU was last year. They were a really lucky team. A lot of really good bounces went their way. A lot of big plays happened in situations that helped them win games that, frankly, most teams would not win. And their luck ran out in the in the Big 12 championship game. I think that if there is a point and a spot for Washington's luck to run out, it is in this situation against a team that they've already played. The same thing happened to TCU. Same exact thing happened to TCU. When you're playing a lucky team, a more balanced team, that plays a more conservative style of play, is going to probably beat you the second time around. That's why I'm not completely gung-ho on this, but I really have this gut feeling and a belief that they accomplished it once, that Washington can do it again. Make sure you check out Bet Online for all of your sports betting needs. For anything that I do betting related, I go on over to betonline.ag and I use promo code BELIEVE50. Bet Online has all of the latest updated odds for the NFL and college football seasons. Anything you need, whether it's futures, live in game betting, no matter what, your football betting needs are met at Bet Online. And again, make sure you use that promo code BELIEVE50, B L E A V. Five zero to get a fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. <laughs> 